On Sunday the 25th of October 2020, the Liberian registered oil tanker Nave Andromeda of the Greek shipping company Navios is approaching the end of her journey from Lagos in Nigeria to the Forley oil refinery of Southampton in the United Kingdom. Seven stowaways, believed to be Nigerian asylum seekers, have been discovered by the crew and have become physically violent and made verbal threats to kill. For their own safety, the 22 crew retreat to the safe room on the vessel, known as the Citadel, and radio a distress signal to the UK Coast Guard, who alert the local police. Fearing a hijack situation, they make the decision to call for military assistance, and a classified response protocol is triggered. First, police and Coast Guard helicopters take off from nearby bases to watch over the tanker. A second aircraft of each type will replace the pair as they have to refuel to maintain a constant overwatch. Nave Andromeda appears to have slowed to a near halt, manoeuvring in slow circles and zigzags off the coast of the Isle of Wight. Over the next hours, negotiations take place over radio between the police and the stowaways to bring the episode to a peaceful conclusion. For now, it isn't clear who is controlling the ship's course, and the incident has been treated as a suspected hijacking. The English Channel is one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world, with major oil, cruise ship and container ship terminals in the nearby Southampton and a Royal Navy base in Portsmouth. RNLI lifeboats stand by at a safe distance from the vessel. HMS Richmond, a Type 23 frigate, is called to assist from her current position off the coast of Devon. Further Navy assets stand by in Portsmouth. Negotiations carry on until the late afternoon, with a close eye kept on the Nave Andromeda. A three-mile exclusion zone is maintained around the vessel. At 3.45pm, two Royal Navy Wildcat and two Royal Navy Merlin helicopters of the Commando Helicopter Force leave Royal Naval Air Station Yeovilton, heading southeast with their transponders off. I personally live in the area, and am able to snap these images as they leave. They reposition to the Royal Marines base at Poole, the HQ of UK Special Forces Unit, the Special Boat Service. The suspected hijacking has taken place a few minutes flying time from the home of the SBS, in a stretch of water in which they train routinely. If a special forces operation is to be conducted against the vessel, it is better to do it at night, and as the vessel remains nearly stationary and the crew are safe in the citadel, there doesn't appear to be a rush to mount an operation straight from pool before sunset. At 4.38pm, a Chinook leaves RAF Odium for pool, bringing equipment and additional SBS operatives. 45 minutes later, a further Chinook departs Odium for the MOD site St Athen in Wales. St Athen is home to the UK Special Forces Support Group. The aircraft lands at 10.06pm, and just 9 minutes later takes off again and flies southeast to Poole, likely carrying further operatives and equipment. The Chinook arrives at 7pm. All of Nave's lights go off. It is likely that Special Forces requested this, but it isn't clear who on the vessel did it. At approximately 7.30pm, under the cover of darkness, a Special Forces operation is launched against Nave Andromeda. First, at least two ribs approach the vessel, and SBS operatives use grappling hooks to scale the outside of the hull. They ensure the deck is secure as the Merlins and Wildcats arrive over the ship in a hover. The Wildcats are used as a distraction, while further operatives fast rope from the Merlins onto the deck. It's night time and there is rain, gusty wind and choppy seas to contend with. One of the helicopters carries further personnel including Navy divers in case the ship's hull has been mined. The 16 SBS operatives now on board move swiftly through the ship, clearing all rooms on all decks. The ship's owner will have provided blueprints of the ship to the SBS in advance, and so they know where and how to clear the ship. The entire ship is secured in just seven minutes. All stowaways are found and arrested. They're all unarmed and so no shots are fired during the operation. Police move on board to take over the situation and the special forces return to base. It is later confirmed that the captain was in fact still controlling the vessel but had sent the rest of the crew to the citadel for their safety, maintaining a safe position off the Isle of Wight 
while the stowaways were dealt with. Attempting a port dock in such a busy shipping lane would not have been safe with violent stowaways on board. The crew resumed control of the ship, diverting to a dock in Southampton a short time after. The ship's owner later thanks the captain and the UK authorities for resolving the situation with great professionalism.